And you can see all of them target substance abuse. <clears throat> so, this is one of the great things about the CTC model. Risk factors are what we say are multi-final, multiple outcomes. Be strategic in what you're choosing and you'll get outcomes on a number of levels. And the board and the CTC have done that. Cameron has led the team as the coordinator and the board has worked to develop an action plan which was launched today and the profile of the community showing how they've looked at that data and what they are going to strategically plan over the next coming years. <coughs> so risk factors are predicted for multiple problems. The more that are present, the greater the risk and the greater the likelihood of the social problem occurring. They're pres present through development and sometimes peak and trough at different points. So something might peak at puberty, something might peak at late high school, something might peak at early primary school. They're buffered by protective factors. So as I said, exercise is a protective factor for heart disease. So we can also build in protection for kids. We want to reduce the risk, but we want to risk reduce, increase protection. A lot of talk this morning about volunteering. Great protective factor. Get kids involved and involved with their community. Get them to give something back to the community. Get them to, what we say, involved in pro-social activities. Pro-social involvement, recognising that and rewarding them that publicly within their families and within the community. Um, the protective factors are the same. They are organised around those four domains. And the protective factors are based on this thing what we're calling, always called the social development strategy. I won't go into it today, but I encourage you to read up on this. But the social development strategy is saying, let's give kids opportunities to be involved in their community, to volunteer, to do things that give to their community. Give them the skills to do that and to know how to do that and give them some feedback and recognise when they do it well. When they do that, what's going to happen? They're going to bond to the people that are important to them, the people that they're working with, the people that they're involved with. And that bonding is a critical part of human and adolescent development. So they bond to the community. What do they then do when they bond to the people that they love and are attached to? They develop the standards of those people, of those important people in life. Protective factors are really important for the building bonding and building healthy adoption of standards of behaviour. So that's the theory behind the protective factor model. All that CTC stuff is based on a public health model. Public health model is not new. It's basically saying, you've got a problem, what are the risk factors? Heart disease. What are the protective factors? Heart disease. How do we intervene? We can intervene on a whole lot of levels. Individual, family, school, community. And then we implement and evaluate that. Great public health stories in Australia are about intervening in terms of smoking, um, road safety, drink driving, cancer, sun smart. All those are public health interventions that have been <coughs> small and have shown success. So it's a lot of stuff to do in a community. It's a lot, of, a lot of information, a lot of concepts, a lot of ideas. And of course, we need to train up the community to do it. And we have done that. And you need to move the communities through five phases. <coughs> now we've heard a little bit today about the Beyond the Bell framework. This is very much the same as Beyond the Bell. It is based on the collective impact model, Beyond the Bell. This is the CDC model, and you will see almost almost very, very similar phases and stages. Beyond the Bell is focusing on education, but Beyond the Bell marries beautifully in alignment with this. So what's really been good in here in Waterfall, the Beyond the Bell team have said, hang on, this is what we're doing, but hang on, maybe we can do some more and get some more outcome. So Beyond the Bell is a nice synergy and is working beautifully, and we've found that in a number of communities where they have stakeholders working already, that somehow they can use the CTC framework to value add to what they're doing. <clears throat> so the first thing is about getting started, getting champions. So that was Francis Brophy and the... Um, the um, Brophy, is it? No, Francis Brophy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Too many bees. <laughs> um, so they were the champions. They were the auspice agency. They are the ones that got it moving. Once you do that, you get yourself organised, develop a profile, create a plan, implement, evaluate. The first thing here is getting those stakeholders involved, <coughs> getting those residents inspired, mobilising to recognise that there is a problem or there's some issues that need to be changed. <coughs> you form your community board. You can't do anything without a government structure. We talked about today, and also when we talk about Beyond the Bell, government structure is important. 
if CTC is to move forward and needs a governance structure, needs to understand how Beyond the Bell fits into that, who's going to do the work, who are the people that are strategically involved with it, who are the people doing the drug work, who are the people doing the day-to-day -day work. So you form your board, you form your key leader group, and these are the sorts of people that are on your board. People that represent your community.